Good. So, surviving or thriving. So, what, what happened is over this last period of time, a couple of things. We've looked at, at your form. So, the first thing is why are you here? And I want you to think about it. Steph started with this last, last month. Do you remember? And he talked about why are you here and what do you want to get out of this? And I, I'm going to challenge you with that question every single time you come here. Why are you here? Because you're going to find that sometimes you're going to go, oh, do I really want to do that? I've got this. This is happening. I'm busy. I've got to do this. I, I, you know, I've, I've heard a bunch of different things from people. But you've got to ask yourself, why are you here? What is your objective for being here? So what we did is we looked at your profiles. So can you, how many people can you see there? That's very good. There's actually four. I'm confused. <laughs> Maybe you're permanently confused. <laughs> So we looked at your profiles. Remember you filled in all those profiles? So one, we put you in your boards. But the second thing is we asked you questions like, what do you want to get out of the boardroom? What are the topics you want to do? We asked you questions like, what have you tried which doesn't work? We've asked you questions like, um, what are the next things you have to do to get to the next level? Okay, and it's, it's complicated. And we, we've got a whole ton of this stuff. But we came up with some really, really key things to finding out what you guys wanted. So. One of the key things we found with a lot of people, not with everybody, but a lot of people is this, too busy to make any money. I'm so busy working, I'm just sort of making it, but I, really what I've got to do is, is get to the next level, I've got to break through, and it's, it's tough. And it's like, and who feels like this? Who feels like they're, like they're doing everything? Okay, and, and that's true, and by the way, that's not, just, that's not just a function of running in your own small business. If you're running a small business or you're by yourself, you, you do do everything, right? Is that right? If you're yeah. in your own small business, you do everything. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's a mistake, isn't it? So we're going to learn that later on today. But you do do everything because you are in your own small business and you think that's all you can do. And you don't have the cash to hire other people, do you? No. Okay, so we're going to talk about that today. So that's it. But I can tell you what, there are other people in the business, people here I know who are running with quite large staff who feel like they're that. I remember mean, when we had 60 staff, I used to feel like that, permanently. Never, never less than 12 hours a day. And it was like hectic, hectic, hectic. <laughs> and you, oh, you're just too busy to make any money. We're going to talk about that. So what do you guys want? So that was, a, that was my impression of the boards generally. There were a lot of that thing. The second thing is, what do you want? Well, here was the main message we got. Everybody wanted growth. I want more sales. I want more revenue. I want a bigger company. I, I want to... I want more. Does anybody want less? Who so wants more? Less stress, maybe. Less stress. <laughs> we all want more. Okay, good. So we're going to talk about this, and we're going to talk particularly in this. We, we, the other thing was people, everybody was saying, we want, we want to break through to the next level, which I think is probably the desire of most people most of the time in business. How do I get to the next level? And we always feel we have this like glass ceiling, and we bump bump on there. Who knows what I'm talking about? You just feel like you, yeah. you, know, like you go around the mountain, ee, ee, you know, and it's, it's like you, you get to a certain level of success and then it's like we got there and then we, you plateau. Okay? So we've got to be able to break this through. And the, the, Some of the key things, and there were lots of things, I've just really tried to pull out the top, top few things, okay, was this. How do I, how do I leverage my products and services? Have I got the right mix? Am I making enough money out of this? How do I manage people? Okay, what about my daily operations? This was a big one. I feel like I'm firefighting every single day. I like, we're just so busy. We fix this and then as we fix this, we've got to fix the next thing and I, I know I need to spend time to work on where I need to go to, but I just, not today because we've just got this problem with this customer or you don't understand, I've just got to deliver this, this and this. In fact, one of the people who wanted to come and speak on, uh, in the November session was booked to come through today to come and have meet everybody, see what was going on. And yesterday, I, I attended one of their talks because I, I, I listened to everybody before they're allowed to speak here. And they said, oh, sorry, we're not going to make it tomorrow. We've got this, this tender. We've got a problem. And we're just too busy. <laughs> Doesn't bode well. <laughs> but that's what happens. Firefighting. How do we structure my business for more profitability? How do I maximize my resources? Where must I grow? In what areas must I grow? So these are the questions that we're seeing. Does that resonate with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what happened is when we looked at all this lot, I thought, I can't find a speaker who's going to cover this. So I thought, okay, I'll do it. Because I wasn't going to talk until like June, July next year. But what I wanted to do was touch on a whole bunch of things with you guys today, 
which will cause you to think and really create that discussion. One of the key things which I looked at is burnout. People are scared about this. I'm doing this, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, but if I keep doing this pace, I'm gonna burn out, I'm gonna get tired. And it's, it's not a function of a small business. Small business, big business, it's the same thing. Okay, you get burned out because it's tired. So, here's the key. You gotta work on your business more than in your business. Who's heard that before? In fact, I'll tell you what I've heard before, and I know I've had it, is you gotta work on, not in. That's what I hear, so that's rubbish. You can't not work in your business. What, are you gonna abdicate? This is absolute rubbish. Maybe if you're running a huge corporation or something like that and you're a strategic executive and you've got a, a board, maybe, maybe, maybe you're, you're permanently working on, but that working on is your working in. For most people, you have to keep working in. And the reason I say you need to work on more than in, which is probably ridiculous because you're honestly gonna work in more than on, is because I want you at least to get a thought that I'm not I need to work on my business. I need to work on my business. Who's never heard this phrase, work, work on rather than in? Anybody here at all? You've never heard that phrase? Okay, good. So that's, that's great. I remember the first time I did this, this was like a revelation to me. It was like, wow, got to work on my business, not in my business. Because we do, we get on this. So here we are. You can have a look at the picture. You can see how the guy's planning and there's not much else in the room. So... What I'm going to go through with you is a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is talk about why you are where you are. Okay, so we're going to just talk a couple of principles about business. It's really, really quick. This, what I'm going to do in like just two or three slides here really is a sort of a two-hour, well, it's actually about a, a two-week intervention actually. Let's, but let's say it's a two-hour talk just to get the basics of it right. And we're going, to, we're going to hit it really quickly. So what I want you to get is the key points, and I want you to go, that's where I am, and I want you to know it's okay. All right? It's all right. Wherever you are right now, it's just normal. That's where you are supposed to be, but just know you're there. If I want to get to Durban, how do I get to Durban? Anybody? You follow a map. I'll follow a map. Okay, so what's the first thing I've got to do? Determine where you are. Determine where I am, because if I'm in Cape Town, I'm going to take a very different road from if I'm in Polokwane. So what I want to give you a little bit is just go, where are you? Why am I here? And why have I got the problems that I've got where I am? And those problems are actually quite normal. But when you know what the problems are, you can, you can break them, yes? So let's first have a, have a look at this. There are four stages in business, and I talk about this all the time. It's basic stuff. But when you get it, people move from survival to stability to success to significance. Significance is where you are making a difference, you're, you're impacting the world, you're making a difference to the people around you, and your company itself is, is driving change. Success is a whole range. So survival to stability, I've always said, is two to five years to start a business. Two to five years to start a business. I actually don't care what it is, whether it's, whether it's uh, you're doing a... Um, oh, by the way, you will get these slides. So if, you, if, you're, if there's too much information, there's one or two slides which you've got a lot of info, please don't try and write it all down. Rather write down the points from the slide that apply to you, yes? As opposed to trying to actually write down the slides, you will get the slides, okay? So two to five years to start a business. So survival to stability. Survival is where, I don't know, we're gonna go out of business and then we're gonna be okay, then we're not, then we're not and then I've just, I just gotta quickly sell this insurance policy and then, okay, I'll come back again and thank God that I'm just not gonna pay these guys and I'm gonna get some money in, yes? I, none of you know what that's like, of course, I understand that. Personally, I've been broke many times, probably been broke more times than I've been successful. And I've lost lots and lots of money on starting businesses. I still do. That's true. So by the way, just a quick one here. This is for free. You get this for free. You don't have to pay for this one. Success, failure. Yes? Yeah. No. Success, failure, 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 failure. Success. Failure, 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 failure. Success. You cannot get to success without failing. Can't do it. Failure is just another milestone on the road to success. So when you fail, just go, rock on, Tommy. We're on our way to success. <laughs> Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, keep moving. Tony, sorry, I've heard an interesting thing. They say first you learn, and then you remove the owl. You remove the owl. owl. <laughs> <laughs> you learn, then you earn. Then you earn. That's very good. I like that. 
Survival disability, stability to success. Stability is where your business is, is doing okay. We're not worrying about cash flow. Okay. And please, God, everybody gets the stability quickly. Okay. Stability and Pete's here. Just pick your hand up, Pete. So how, how Pete Pete's going to come talk to us probably next year. Pete uh, worked with us some, some years ago as financial director, gone off, he's run his own um, uh, business school called Edge Business School out Greenstone Way. Yep, and where they take people through um, BSc or B uh, accounting and chartered accountants and stuff. Okay, so those of you who couldn't hear, consulting, CFA, all that sort of stuff. Pete's really, really good. He's an entrepreneurial financial director. It's a very, very rare breed. <laughs> Incredibly rare breed. Most accountants walk through life like this. Oh, that's what happened last month. Oh, okay. But they only tell you like a month. That happened two months ago. At the end of the year, they go, ah, oh, so this is what happened with your year. That wasn't very good. Okay, let's not try and do that again next year. Okay, come back, call me next year, and I'll tell you how you did. <laughs> okay, which is really not very good. What you want is an accountant who's, who's telling you where you're going all the time. Okay, so Pete's one of those. If you need to talk to him, talk. But next year, he's going to come and talk to us about how do we look at our books as an entrepreneur, as a, as a business person. So um, stability. So, and then success is where you know, you, you're actually doing very nice. You get some time freedom and all sorts of stuff, which is really where I'm trying to focus to get to. Most of the time, we tend to go around a bit of a spiral. We get to success, and then that's all good, and then we make some mistakes, and we go back to stability. Sometimes we go back to survival, and so on like that. And by the way, even when you get to significance, I always remember Siltec was South Africa's biggest IT distribution company some years ago. Over 90% <coughs> of IT products in South Africa were distributed through Siltec. That's just like, that's not a gorilla in the room. That's like, you know, a, a whale in a goldfish bowl. It's just like they just totally dominated the market. And they went bust. So just because you're big doesn't think you don't think you're making money. Okay? It's not about that. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay, good. So this is a fantastic book. Um, I would probably recommend The E-Myth by uh, Michael Gerber instead for, for if you're running a smaller business. It's a big read. It's a lot in here. Uh, if you really want to talk about it, come chat to me. It's like it is, but these are his ideas. So this is the life cycle of your business. You start here and, and companies end up there. Success goes up. Time goes along. Okay? So you, you start with an idea. You grow into a small business. You make lots of money. You go through some change and you end up in prime, which is that sort of hugely successful slash significant type business. And then if you don't maintain that, you end up in aristocracy and bureaucracy down over here, right? The, the, the how becomes more important than the, the what or the why. And then there's death. And government is just slightly above that. So, so the, over this here, these guys over here, you're growing. There you're aging. Here's an external focus, internal focus. You're flexible over here, which is all you guys are flexible right now. Over there, you're not. It's all about control. And here it's function over form. In other words, what over how. We need to do this. This is how we're going to do it, as opposed to how we do it. It doesn't really matter how we do it. We'll fix that later. Let's just get the work done. Yes? Whereas over here, it's form over function. Now, I know it's going to take you three years to get your driving license, but we do have to fill this thing out in triplicate. Okay? And sorry, but you have to come back to the municipality seven times because you didn't bring this piece of paper. Okay? You understand what I'm talking about? Okay. So let's have a look at these very quickly. Courtship. So none of you guys are in here. This is the ideation stage. I've got an idea of a business, but all of you were there at some point in time. So you'll understand this. It's all about talk, 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 talk. Can we do this? Can we do this? What do you think, Brett? Well, uh, what about you, Steve? Can you, would you get on board? What would happen? Would, Ralph, would you buy this thing? Okay. And then test, 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 test. Try it, try it, try it until eventually you start. And the fact is... It's either reality when you, you hit the cold hard facts or it's just a dream. Okay, next, next one. How many people have had a business idea that never launched? Okay, all of you should stick your hand up at some point in time. Okay? And if you haven't, Kiyosaki said one out of ten businesses succeed, start ten. <laughs> so I've started about 40. <laughs> Second one, infancy. Okay, and I, I want to say there, and again, I'm going to veer a little bit away from, from Adidas. He talks about infancy as being very, very small business. Actually, it can actually be a lot what I call a lifestyle business. You know, I'm a big fan of lifestyle businesses where people grow to a certain size. It can be less than 10 people, less than five people. But it, 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 
it's a good lifestyle for you. It does what you do. You take three, four months off a year. Everybody take three, four months off a year? Okay. Yes? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, we need to get you to three, four months a year, okay? But let's look at some of the, the things here. First of all, it's all about product innovation. I've got to take this product to market. It's about product innovation. What are we doing? What are we doing? Taking the next thing, taking the next thing. So the product is totally important here, or my service. This is what I do. Dave does SEO. This is what I do. I do SEO and, and a whole bunch of stuff on digital marketing. And this, this should take you from survival to stability. If you don't get, if you don't solve your cash, you're dead. So what's called, he calls it infant mortality. And it's normally caused by cash. That's why, if, if you remember last time I was talking about businesses, the reasons why businesses succeed or fail, and they say cash. And I said, no, that's not the reason. That was the thing that caused the death in the end. But what was the reason that normally is they didn't understand their pricing model, they didn't understand how to manage their money. It was learning. Okay. It's all about sell, 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 sell. Okay, there's going to be a slide right at the end. All about volume, volume. Drive, drive, drive. Push, push, push. Long hours, hard work, all the rest of it. So if you're starting a business, your first two to five years, is it about hard work? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Can you get past that? Can you take three-month holidays and, and only work four hours a day starting a new business? No, you cannot. You will not get this airplane off the ground. <laughs> you won't. All right? This early stage here, he used to draw it like with a bell curve here, but I couldn't find that picture on the internet. It's all about ramping up. It's massive, massive, massive effort to get your company up and running. Massive effort, long hours, resilience, pushing. When everything looks like it's going to go wrong, you keep going. Who knows what I'm talking about? You have a cash shortage. You have a time shortage. Not enough time, not enough time, not enough time. It's high risk because you can go around and you've got no management depth. Normally there's just one or two of you. That's normal. So if you're there and you're thinking about that and you're running a small business, Okay, it's normal. It's normal. Those are your difficulties that you're facing at the moment. That's what it is. What you've got to do is you've got to learn how to get through that. I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that today. You can create good stability or success with a small company. So it was just a note. But you've got to get your resources right. You've got to get your systems and some of those things right. You have to resolve that time and money issue. You have to work that out. We're going to talk about that today. So then some people break through that. So there's a glass ceiling here, and you break through into this phase, and he calls it go-go, and he talks about this as being unbridled rapid growth. So he doesn't really have a section in here which is just like, I'm stable and I'm successful. He goes, well, you're going to go into being like humongously successful with way too much money. In, in, in today's day and age, it, it doesn't happen a lot. It does happen with some companies. But one of the factors of GoGo is normally you've been running your company for a while and you have some issues. You get, you're going there. It's all about process innovation, the method. This is how we do it. Okay? This is how we do it. We do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. It's about your methods. And just stand over here. So, um, again, stability, success. P key problems in here, and there's lots, but some key problems. Inability to delegate. I got this company to where it is. I did the effort. I now employ Gary. Gary messes it up half the time. Just give me up, up. Thank you. I can, do, I can take the notes on my own meeting. Eh? Thanks very much. <laughs> okay? I know you can do it, but I can do it better. I don't know why I bother. Let me just do it myself. It will save me. Does it save you time? No, it takes you time. Can you do it quicker than somebody else? Yes, but then it's your time. Can you get your time back? No. So are you working in or are you working on? In. in. There are no trick questions today. If there's a trick question, I will tell you the answer first and then I'll ask you the question. Okay. <laughs> you don't trust us. <laughs> too many opportunities. When you get into unbridled growth, there's too many opportunities. We could do this, we could do this, we could do this. Sometimes that just happens in infancy. Sometimes that's a function of the entrepreneur. That's one of my problems. If you ask Ralph in the early days, every, every few days I'd come in with a, hey, we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. And only when we actually focused on a couple of key things did the company really start moving forwards because we just did too many things. We can be reactive. Why are we reactive? 
because we're working on too many opportunities and we're running around. We're actually putting out fires a lot of the time because we started a bunch of stuff, we, ne we don't complete them. We, we start the project and we don't actually finish the project. And we start the next thing and then eventually the guy whose project you didn't finish goes, but you haven't finished my project. Overlapping tasks, too many loose ends. Okay, what are the problems? How do we die in this, in GoGo? -Go? So the first, the founder doesn't grow. I just want to congratulate you guys for being here right now. I mean, we had that slide up earlier on about too busy, too busy, can't work our business. I, there's a few people who have, haven't arrived today, which I'm like absolutely amazed at. But they're probably too busy. So I just want to congratulate you because you value yourself enough to be here to learn. Okay? What's going to happen because of that is you're not going to get stuck here if you keep your education. If you don't, you're actually going to get stuck here. You don't grow. There's John Maxwell. Who's, who's heard of John Maxwell? Yes? If you haven't heard of John Maxwell, worth, worthwhile listening to. He's, there, there's a laws, of, uh, laws of Leadership and uh, Laws of Teamwork. The Laws of Teamwork he talks that, or the lead, law, 21 Laws of Leadership he talks about, yes. Um, he talks about uh, the law of the lid. Your organization cannot grow past you. Scary. I'll tell you, that's scary. Now, you know what? As entrepreneurs, we're supermen, right? We, we know everything. We understand everything. No, you don't. So understand something. If you're not growing all the time, it can't go past. And so you end up too much dependency on the founder. The founder answers all the questions. All the decisions come through. There's one bottleneck, which is the founder goes through. So what happens? The founder starts feeling trapped. I work, I've worked with many, many companies who are 10, 20, 30 years old, even 30 staff, 50 staff, 100, 150. I worked with one lady. She's in the logistics industry in placement. She's got 250 staff. And all she said to me when I met with her, I only had three hours with her in the end, and, and I went, I actually can't help you because she was stuck here and she wasn't prepared to listen. She just said, I can't. Why can't anybody do this? And she'd been for three years, she'd been through professional manager after professional manager after, and she'd fired all of them. Were they all useless? No, they were all actually probably quite good. She was the problem. She, she was like, listen, take this. Ta take it. Take this. No, oh, you're useless. Fired. Okay? So this is a real problem over here. So if you're not here, it's okay. You will be here one day. So just no. Firefight, burnout, you cannot institutionalize your systems. I'm going to talk about that just now. Or you're really too good, you make too much money, and fatal arrogance creates one big mistake. Dimension data were a good example of that. So the good news is, if the founder can transform or get out the way long enough, then you can actually create um, some stability. But you have to bring in the, those managers, and this weave your instinct and experience into the fabric of the company. I'll go through that later on. Doing that, you're going to go through adolescence. What's adolescence? Adolescence is all about change, where you're going from this go-go, unstructured, entrepreneurial, we can do anything, very flexible, we make lots of money, doing a whole bunch of stuff, but it's killing me, to we're trying to get to professional company, which is professionally run by managers, which, where we are predictably successful. It's all about change. And here we start adding form to function. How as well as what? how we do things. Hang on a second, we do actually have employee forms and we do actually have leave forms. <laughs> and we actually keep track of leave and we know, I don't know, whatever it is, have policies and systems and procedures come in. Why? Because before Gary knew everything, but the problem is it's killing Gary. So now you've got to know everything. So instead of me coming to Gary every single time I need to ask something, I can make the decision. How do I make that decision? Well, you've got to give me a structure because I haven't run this company for 20 years. I don't know what you're talking about. I need, to, I need to have a roadmap. So we need to have systems. We need to have procedures. We need to have policies. Got to understand the values. If you bring that in too early, you just kill the company. But you can bring it in right from day one. Remember, you're going to go through all these stages to get to prime. So you can bring in any of this at any point in time in your company. Does it make sense? You don't have to wait. This isn't, you don't get to adolescence just because you've got 50 people. Get to adolescence with three people or four people. Does it make sense? Okay, so you, it's just all about structuring your business. Work smarter, professional managers, focus on profits as opposed to just turnover. Big mistake, we can talk about that later. Create systems and consistency. 
What kills people in adolescence? Three things. One, the entrepreneur is forced out, which sometimes kills a company, and admin takes over, and you go straight over into bureaucracy on the other side. We become an admin organization. There's no entrepreneur. There's no drive. And we just maintain. And we just Every year, we just sort of fade out until we, there's nothing left over. Or you can revert back into the founder's trap. Entrepreneur is unfulfilled. He quits, or he pulls the whole company back into here. But instead of going back into here, you end up over here. It's problems. It doesn't always happen, but it can happen. So there's no green on that one. It's just change. And then finally, in prime, prime is where you, it's all about integrational. In, in, integra it's, where the previous one was about systems. This is all about integration, getting everything to work together. Because now we're typically we're bigger, and finance has to work with sales, which has to work with ops. And there's no one person just going, it's OK, just leave that project for a while. Let's just work on this, because I know I understand it. I'll get the bigger picture. It's all around integration. But you get departmental turf wars. These guys fighting these guys. Right, you know, well, you've all been there. Rufil and knows this very well. Integrating the whole alignment issues, churning, finding managers, and your, your, your issues, you can slip back into adolescence. More likely, actually, you slip over into aging. You get into prime, and you're successful for a while, and your own success kills you. Okay? By the way, one thing as a, as a, as a smaller company, beware of landing a whale in a fishing boat. Okay? Sometimes that wonderful customer you think is just like the fantastic customer is actually going to kill you. You have to be careful of that. You can do it, but you have to think, you have to plan, you've got to work out your resources. Growth, when you're growing, it sucks your cash. Okay, if you want to make a lot of money next year, just stop growing for a while. Just like ease back like this and you'll find money will drop onto your bottom line. But you don't just want to stop there, do you? And then it's going to be harder to pick it up again next year. But just understand, massive growth, landing a big customer can really suck your cash. That's not good news, is it? <laughs> land big customers. I'm not saying don't land big customers. Just be careful. Plan. Okay. Burrito rule, 80-20, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 80% of your revenue will come out of 20% of your clients, but 80% of your problems will also come out of 20% of your clients. Right. So it's about deciphering that, that measure and looking at yeah. where is it worth spending your time. Absolutely. So, Burrito is very, very good. I haven't got something on, on time management, but Burrito is good. The 80-20 rule, you wouldn't have heard that on the video, but 80-20 rule is 20% is of your effort, 80% of your results, 20% of your clients, 80% of your, and so on, right? So early prime, you can get up to prime when you're a small company. But to get there, you're going to go through some of these phases. You're going to go through changes. You're going to go through issues. You're going to have to put systems in place and so on. OK, so where are you? Write it down. Where are you on that scale? Infancy, go-go, adolescence, prime. Where are you right now? Do you know where you are? That's your starting point. What are your problems? Okay, If you're stuck and you're hitting a glass ceiling, 98% of it, 95% of that problem we can solve by understanding corporate life cycles. Where you are, what your problems are. When you understand what your problems are, you know what they are because you're hitting them every single day. But remember, when we talk in the ramp-up sessions, we talk about you can't see yourself when you're in your own fog. You can't. That's the purpose of the board. So today, when you're in your boards, Maybe what you need to do is have a discussion about, guys, where are we sitting at the moment and what are some of those issues and why am I hitting a glass ceiling and what that glass ceiling is and has anybody got through that glass ceiling in my board? It might be one of the things you want to go through. Happy. Okay, so let's take some of the theory and put it into practice. Right, we've got a lot to get through. So I'm going to go at quite a quick pace. If anybody needs to stop and ask me a question, stick your hand up. Okay, um, I'm okay with that. So I want you to think of your company like an arrow. The, this is called the fletch or your, your tail fins or whatever, but it's called a fletch. This is your head office. Your head office gives you direction in life. If you've ever tried to shoot an arrow without fins on the end, it just goes all over the place, like a crossbow. Your shaft, that whole thing in the middle is your products and services. This is what we're going to take to market. Again, if, I, if I've got a little tiny thing like this, nice big fin and nice big head and a little thing, it's not going to go anywhere either. So a nice, decent shaft is going to give me, and I can make that thicker and stronger and take more and more products to market. The arrowhead on the top is my sales. 
that gives me penetration. Okay, if I don't have a nice sharp bit on the end, it's really difficult trying to get that arrow to stick into anything. Particularly if I've got lots and lots and lots of, if I've got a really nice big thick shaft like this, <laughs> I'm gonna shoot that thing, I'm not gonna get it into anything. I've gotta have a sharp point on the end. So I've gotta know how to sell. <coughs> yes? As an entrepreneur, by the way, if you don't like sales, quit. Now, let me just save you the pain. Quit, go and work for somebody. Don't run your own business. You have to, have to, have to learn how to sell if you're gonna run your own business. But I don't like sales, well that's okay. Then quit, or don't run the business. <laughs> Bad salespeople have got skinny kids. <laughs> you have to learn to sell. We're going to talk about sales today, okay? I'm gonna teach you just a couple of tips on, on all these points. So marketing is the bow. Now, I used to have this the other way around. You say marketing was a, the, the little uh, arrow tip, which was, gave you your penetration, and sales was the ability to actually make that thing go far. It's changed. Sales is no longer, I, I was at a sales conference yesterday, and they're talking about now we've got, there's more training done on salespeople than any other part of the business. Do you know that? More money is spent on training salespeople than on any other area of the business. It's wrong, and they're getting it wrong. 87% of salespeople are doing nothing. That was the stat. 87%. Good grief. What a waste of money. And that's not just a waste of money on their, their salaries. They're not bringing the stuff in. I mean, I'm, I've said, we've said for years, the hardest person to employ is salespeople. Gary's got an entire business. What part of his business is, is helping people find salespeople. So what we do is, is we, we're sharpening this, we're sharpening this, we're sharpening this, we're sharpening this, we're making it better, 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 we're putting better tech on our arrowhead, which is a good thing. But the problem is with our marketing is, is we're shooting with one of these things. So we've got this stunning arrow with this titanium shaft with super thick and fletches and it's like, it's like a cruise missile. And, and, and then we've got this. The world has changed to a marketing world from sales. It's all about, well, I'm going to talk about it now, but it's all about people finding you. Yes, you've got to find them, but them wanting to buy you. So let's just talk about a couple of things. So um, there's a book called Good to Great. I've just forgotten the guy's name now. Tim John, Tim, um, Tim, Tim, Jim. Jim Collins. Good to Great. If, who's read Good to Great here? Okay, so that's one book you need to put on your list. You need to read Good to Great. Okay, you need to read Good to Great. And one of the things he talks about is a hedgehog concept. I won't go into the whole thing. So, but he talks about as a company, you've got to look at three things. What are we good at doing? What are we good at doing? Right? I mean, some companies, I was talking to somebody yesterday from MTN, and they were saying, you know, what we're really good at doing is moving SIM cards. <laughs> what we're bad at doing is integrated solutions. We're trying to get into that space, but we just consistently mess up and mess up and mess up because we don't understand it. But we've got to move there because the market has moved. Okay? But they're not good at doing it. Okay? So what are you good at doing? Secondly, what are you passionate about? What do you love doing as an organization? All right? If your staff aren't passionate about what you're passionate about, get rid of them. I really mean that. And, and you heard Steph talking about it last month. You know, you get people and they're good at something, but they're not passionate, they've got a bad attitude. They're only going to take you backwards. Okay, you've got to have people who can get on with you. If you're going in this direction, and you've got somebody going in this direction, get rid of them. They have to get in this direction. If they're going in this direction, you've got to compensate. You've now got to go in this direction to sort of pull them right so that you end up in this direction. What a waste of time and effort and money and energy. Okay, if you are with a partner or you're in a business or something like that, or if, you're, if you've got staff members, you've got to get them aligned. They, so that means they've got to know your vision. They've got to know, understand where you are. Passion. Last thing is how do we make money? And I'm going to come back to it right at the end. One key economic denominator he talks about it. He says your business, you've got, to, you've got to take your whole business down to one key economic driver. Let me give you an example. I'm going to use McDonald's a couple of times today. McDonald's, what is the one thing that drives the whole of McDonald's? When they went through this exercise, they said, what is the one thing as McDonald's that if we get this right, the whole company works? Thoughts? Yes. Property. Property. The systems. The systems. Automation. Automation. How many burgers they sell? The kids. How many burgers they sell? Upselling. Upselling. It's kids. 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 kids was 
toys. The speed of this question. The speed of which? Not using horse meat. Not using horse meat. <laughs> Location. Okay. Let me help you guys. Upselling. I think Chase knows this one. I think him and I have talked about it before. <laughs> but he's right. Upselling. So are all these things important? Yes. More advertising? Yes. Location? Going into other countries? Getting the system right? Finding franchises? Training them? Are all of those important? Yes. They worked out that if, if all they did is they go, would you like a bigger coffee with that? Can I give you a Oreo with that? Would you like to supersize with that? That drove everything because the people were already in there and they found the biggest bang for the buck were taking people from this level to the next level and they could almost double their profits because of it. So that's why when you go into McDonald's, you know, and there's always a card with it, like a happy face on the back. Have you ever flipped those things around? There are questions. Ask the customer, would you like with that? Okay? That's a key economic driver. If they get that right, everything else spins out. It's like cogs and wheels. So are all the other things important? Yes. But what is the one thing? What is the one thing in your business? Write it down. Maybe you want to talk about that in your boards. What's the one thing? Because that's where the magic happens. Where all these things overlap. That's where the magic happens. Where we're working in our strength, in our love, and on our, our key economic driver, where we, those three things go over, that's where you're going to make money. If you don't know that, you need to work on your business. You need to lock yourself in a room for an hour, <laughs> not talk to anybody, and work it out. Then you're going to drive that harder than anything else. By the way, from a, remember we were talking about marketing? That's the thing that differentiates you. Because is your competition doing the same as you? Yes. Well, there's a big overlap anyway. So what you've got to do is you've got to find out not only just what you can do really well, but what your competition doing well, and then how are we going to differentiate ourselves from the competition? Unique selling propositions, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Second one, leverage your competition. I see people don't do this, and I don't know why they don't. We, we've changed. Is everything online nowadays? Yeah. Everything, right? Websites. Can you have a look at your competition? Yes, I, I remember in the early days, Steve, I, we, so Steve's a competitor of mine, hi, hi Steve, um, and one of our companies. So, so for us before, he runs a company called Sequential Warehouse Management, and before we would have had to, I don't know, find a friendly supplier who gave us their brochure and showed us their yeah. pricing or... It, I mean, there was all this subterfuge, and, you know, and it was like, and is this ethical? And no, it's not really, so we can't really do that. And I don't know, there was all this stuff. Now I just go online, just read his website. I, I look at his customer base on his website because he's got all these testimonies, not his whole customer. I, I look at his Facebook page, I look at what other people are talking about him. Right? Point number one. Point number two, so you're going to launch your website. Question to you right now, how good is your website? How good is your digital presence? How many people did, joined you and, and contacted your company because you had a, a, a newspaper article in this last month? No one. Uh, or because you put an ad in the U magazine or something? No one. Or the classifieds. It's gone. I'm not knocking print media, there's a place for it, and if you're in certain businesses, that's where you need to be. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're doing sort of nail polishing or something like that, it's a good, good place to advertise. But for many, many companies, it isn't. I, I mean, Brett, maybe, for, you know, in cameras and things like that, maybe no, that's... Yellow pages works like bulk. Yellow pages. You know. 75 plus, that's like five pages. So, so that, there's a thing. Not. Not. <laughs> okay, I was surprised, but I think, okay, maybe it's the online stuff. Uh, yes. Online, if, if I want to find something, I want to go to a restaurant, where do I, where do I go? Google. Are you on Google? Are you on page one? Can you find you? Is it the search words? Damn, this is so much to do. Dave, Leandri, Gary, P these guys are experts. So they go and talk to them, okay, as to how to do that, how to optimize your site. You've got to be optimized for Google. You've got to, this is so hard. It's so hard. And I'm, I know nothing about this, man. I just make samosas. <laughs> how do I know about this stuff? Do you know who does know about it? Your competitors. Because, and especially the big ones, okay? Because they've done it. The big ones have got a marketing budget of a million dollars, $10 million. They've got SEO experts. They've got keyword research. They've got copywriters. They've got flip. They've got everything. 
If you steal from one person, it's called plagiarism. If you steal from lots of people, it's called market research. <laughs> no, you can't steal somebody else's copy. Google will kill you. So I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying don't do that, but go and have a look. What are the, all the key points that come up on every single one of your competitors' websites? Have you got those key points? No. Should you have them? Yes. Okay, if you do them, obviously, right? Go and take it. Yeah, but that's going to take time for me to do that. It's called working on your business, not in your business. Who's going to work on your business? Who's the best person to work on your business? You are, because you're the owner. Leverage your competition. I could talk about this for an hour, but you get the point, hey? You get it. Happy. Yeah. Marketing. That's how you market, okay? That's how you get it done. So let's talk about selling. Okay, so first of all, what is sales? The arrowhead. What is sales? And I want you to get this definition. Write it down. Go and write this thing down. I know you're going to get the slides later, but I want you to write this down. I want you to write it on your mirror in lipstick or cokey pen. I want you to put it on your, on your forehead backwards so that you can read it every time you look in the mirror. Put it on your desk. Create a screensaver. This is what sales is. It's not what sales was 20 years ago. It's not. And that's why there's so much training going on in the sales world. The sales world has changed. Sales is helping your client. I, I, like, I don't like customer, I like client because it, it implies more of a sort of a relationship. But that's just me, it's just semantics. It's helping. I, I prefer the word serving, but it didn't make sense in the sentence. So I use the word helping. Helping your client to make a decision. Helping your client to make a decision. To buy something they already want, they already want or need, from me. Yes. Very quick example, cell phones. What, what's the best cell phone on the market Apple. right now? Apple, and you'd be right. Anybody else got a... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the point, Apple, why? So he's going to buy another Apple. Who's on Samsung here? Who's on, who's on let's just pray for you a second. I'm Black <laughs> Anybody on Blackberry? We're just a moment of silence for anybody on Blackberry. <laughs> Okay, here's the point. You've already chosen your cell phone when you walk into the shop. Am I right? Yes. Why? You've talk, I've talked to Sonia. I've talked to Lisa. I, I, I've talked to everybody, and I've decided this is the one. I've done some research. I've had a look at it, <laughs> right? And I know this is what I want. When I go into the shop, what is the only thing I really want to know? Have you got my color? You've got my blah, blah, blah. And have you got any specials on? Because I might be swung at the last minute. I might get the S, or I might get the normal one, or I might get the... 128 gig or this, and there might be some fine details at the end depending on your specials because he's going to help you make a decision and I might need some information at the end. What about a big complex sale? Trust me, they already know. We, we sell big end software up into large companies, millions of rands. Trust me, years ago it used to be walking, this is why you need a transport management system, this is why you need that, and they'd go, oh, I'm doing it on the back of a cigarette packet at the moment, but like maybe this would help me. And there was a whole education process, and there was a... Nowadays, you're walking and people are going, I know I need this, my competition have got this, I've got to get this thing, I know I already want it. So now, oh, by the way, over 50% of, of companies that have already gone through POC, proof of concept, uh, sales are ending in no decision. 50% worldwide, 50%. No decision. That's a stat, by the way. It's a real stat. 50%. I'm going to help my client make a decision. I'm going to talk, talk to you about I'm going to teach you how to do this in a second. To buy something they already want from you. I was in a shop the other day. I won't say what it was. And this guy did a fantastic job. And he sold me. And he absolutely convinced me to get this thing. And I said, thank you very much. And I walked out the shop. And I got on Dr. Google, Mr. Google here. And I Googled it. And I found it somewhere cheaper over there. And I bought it from them. And I got it shipped to me. 15 minutes the guy spent with me. Was he a good salesman? Probably. No. No. Why wasn't he a good salesman? Because he didn't make the sale. Was he really, was he a good educator? Yes. Did he know his product well? Yes. All the stuff they teach you in sales, you know your product well. It's all correct, by the way. You just got to add to it. Right? From you. Have you got this? Okay. Go and teach this to your salespeople. Get there. Every time you walk up to your salesperson, walk up and say, Brett, What's the definition of sales? Ask him. 
what's the definition of sales? And if they can't repeat, whack them over the side of their head, give it to them, stick it to their head, write it on the top uh, in cokey so they can't rub it off. You get it. Understand it. So I, I was going to tell you a story. I'm not. So three golden rules of sales. Three golden rules of sales. Absolutely golden. Do not break these three things. Sales is not complicated. We've gone these big sales training things, and I think they're great, and there's some really, really clever stuff in there. I mean, the thing I saw yesterday was the sales managers, and they had like 368 things that the sales guy's got to do. And he said, this is the hardest job in the company. I agree with him. Okay? But I also can tell you, 80-20 rule, if you get some absolute basics right, you will, you will win. Firstly, people want to buy, they don't want to be sold. Who likes to be sold here? How do you feel when you walk into that, that shop in, and you, you're looking for a new suit, you want to buy a new suit and you're cool, and the guy comes up and he says, can I help you? And you go, I'm, j I'm just looking at the moment. Okay, and then there's one of, firstly, you want somebody to come up and say, can I help you? Because otherwise you just feel like, uh, why am I here? And then you want to leave. So you want somebody to pay attention to you. But then you go, I'm just looking at the moment. And, they, and if they go, certainly, so not a problem. I'm going to be over here. If you need anything at all, just give me a shout. Okay. And then they stand over here. So there's two things they can do. They can talk to their friend. Or they can stand attentively and watch. Maybe there's two or three people. It's like a waiter in the, in the you know, when you want the waiter. I want the bill. I want, I want the bell. Then when they come, I want to buy. Thank you. Can I try this suit, this suit, and have you got this thing in bright pink? <laughs> yes? And I want to buy. I hate being sold. The other way is he sits there and he goes, can I help you? And you go, no. And then you go there and you start looking at this and he's there again. You're like, oh, what do you want? And he says, oh, yes, well, I can get to that for you. And uh, what size are you? I said, no, I can see I'm, I'm this size. This, I can see. Yeah, well, th this, of course, is excellent. So this looks fantastic. Just, why don't you just try this on? And I'm going, I don't want to try this on. So then what do you want to do? Leave. Don't sell people. Don't sell people. But how do, how do we sell? I'll show you how you sell. But don't sell them. Don't try and sell them something they don't want. Helping people to make a decision to buy something that they already want. If they don't want it, they don't need it, go, you know what? You don't need this. I did a consulting job the other day. I was pulled in. And uh, the guy came in and we, I said, I'll give you an hour. Let's chat for an hour. He told me his business and I said, at the end of it, listen, I cannot help you. I can help you. I'm the wrong person. You're going to get more value. And I gave him two other companies you should go and talk. And he said, yeah, but you sell your time. And I said, well, I do 10 hours of consulting a month. And he went, yeah, okay, but don't you want this? I said, I'd love to. I haven't booked 10 hours for this month, so I would love to sell you. But I said, I'm not the best person for you. These guys are going to give you a better result than I will. Did I get trust from him, do you think? Of course. Do you think he'll refer me to somebody else? Yeah. Do you think he'll use me if he needs to later stage? Don't sell people. They want to buy. I still buy on emotion. Sales is an emotional game. It's not a logical game. If it was logical, men would ride side saddle. <laughs> people buy on emotion. Sales is always emotional. And you have to create emotion in the sale. If you don't create emotion in the sale, they're not going to buy from you. With a complex sale, that becomes relationship. Last one. Listen to me. Listen to me. I, th oh, I, I can't stand it. I go in and I, I don't know how many sales presentations I've been in. I, I, was, with, I was with a guy... Lisa, that gentleman who came to talk to us about that product the other day, he spent almost an hour telling me about his product and he had never asked me one question as to what I wanted to do with it. Not one. And I'm like, and I'm sitting there and I was being polite because I actually know the guy and he's a super guy, right? A very, very, very successful guy, far more successful than I've ever been. But he spent an hour telling me about his product. This is like vomit all over the table. It's like, oh, my product, oh, let me tell you how great we are. And this is what we've done and this is my history. And do you know how much I cared? They don't care. Do you care about somebody when they just like bleh? We had a guy on our, on our board years ago, and he used that. This is how he employed salespeople. He used to give them a rubber, you know, an eraser, and he used to give them the rubber, and he used to say, "Sell me the rubber." And he used to sit back. It's, it's better if you give them a cell phone. I used to do it with a cell phone. Sell me the cell phone. What do people do? Um, okay. Um, Right, can, must I go? Go? Okay, go. 
Okay, so this cell phone, uh, as you can see, it's, it's Apple. It's the latest Apple. Um, it's the greatest technology. It's got this uh, finger touch thing. Okay, where have I gone wrong? Talking about the product. Okay, so I'll tell you if you're a good salesman or not in the first three seconds. What, what's the first thing I'm going to do? What is the first thing I want to hear? Huh? Put in your pocket and buy back. What's the first thing I want to hear from a salesperson? Hi, I believe you're in the market for a cell phone. What do you need out of a cell phone? What are you going to use the cell phone for? Have you got any preferences? Sales is helping somebody to make a decision to buy something they already want. Listen to me. Secondly, speak whose language? So stay away from three-letter acronyms. Well, the USP on the QTZ, uh, we find that with a lot of the time on the WPQs, it's just we don't have that RFP, which really actually would give you the LSDs in the end of it. So what? Avoid your speak. Unless they speak your speak. That's cool. Then speak their speak. But always speak their speak. Never speak your speak. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? They want to know only one thing. What's in it for me? So what the customer wants to know, what's in it for me? If you're coming in and you're selling a piece of complex software or you're selling something else, I only want to know what's in it for me. If I'm buying a cell phone, all I want to know is what's in it for me. Yes? And so you've got to be talking their language. You've got to be talking what's in it for me all the time. So you've also got to build value. Sales is all about value nowadays. People don't have money. We're not sitting in days where people, there's tons and tons of money. I don't know if there ever was a period of time in history where there ever was. I, I'm not sure. But still, value. How do I create value? This is very quick. So first of all, take your product or your service. All of you got a product or service, yes? All right, and on that, you've probably got a little brochure, you've got a little PDF document which says, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. This cell phone does this, it's got a photo, it's got a camera, it's got voice recognition. You know, cell phones have got voice recognition. Right? And it's got all these different things. Excellent, great. So list your product features, that's easy. The techies can give you that, you can give you that. Okay, because you know that. So then what I want you to do is take each feature and I want you to rephrase it as if you were the customer. So our software does automatic billing. Okay, that's good. I don't care. Why do I want automatic billing? Well, I, I'm, my cash flow's got to be right. I've got to get my bills out in time. Uh, I want to save time with the accountant. I, I want, yeah, uh, what is it? Right? Always give an example. If you want to hang, hang, hang this up on the wall, you have to go and buy a drill bit. Why? Because I need to drill a hole in the wall to put the things on to eventually put the TV up there. Am I interested in the drill bit? No. So when I walk into the shop, I go, I'm looking for a drill bit. And they sit me down, they go, excellent, sir, fantastic. We have this titanium plated drill bit. It's made out of tempered steel. It goes up to 4,000 degrees centigrade, 9,000 revs per second. It's an amazing thing. This thing, do I care? No. no. What do I want? I want a hole in the wall. So when you talk about your drill bit, I want you to talk about it as a hole in the wall. Do you get it? Yes? This is an exercise you need to do, by the way. This might be one of your POAs. Describe it as a hole in the wall. Then I want you to put a value on it. What, what is that? Give me one second. Give me, what is the value of that hole in the wall? Ralph, yes. Okay, what is, what's, that what's in it for me? Thank you. What's in it for me? Me being the? Client. Customer. Client. Assign a value to it. What's the value of the hole in the wall? Well, we can hire out the blah, blah, blah. What's the value? Okay. And then when you talk to your customer, only speak in their language. Remember the golden will, rule? Listen to me, find out what I want, and then speak in my language. When you speak in my language, talk return investment. This is your value. This is the return you're going to get. This is what it's going to cost you, but this is what you're going to get. When you joined the advisory boards, I ran through a little presentation, and we talked about the cost of making bad decisions. Yes? How much did it cost you? Whatever you're paying to be here today, if you're not making 10 to 100 times, you're not, getting, you're not doing what you should be doing out of the advisory boards. There's this not a cost of being here today. Even your time, it's not a cost. Absolutely not a cost. I've got people who are not joining the advisory boards because they're going, this is a joke. It should be 30,000 rand a session. I'm not going to pay three. <laughs> like, what are you going to get for three? Because they're running bigger businesses. Okay? 
That's not a sales job. I'm not trying to sell you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get you to understand you've got to talk value to the client. When you talk value to the client and you really talk their language and you really understand what they need, they will buy. From who? From you. Why are they going to buy from you? Return on investment. What are, your comp what are your competitors doing? Product vomit all over the table. Because that's what the sales guys are still trained to do. Know your product, know your customer, beat them to death, features, benefits, features, benefits, features, benefits. This is the feature, this is the benefit. This is the feature, this is the benefit. By the way, that benefit was the attempt at putting it in the WIFM. That's what the attempt is. But it's normally bad because we're still looking at it from our perspective. Don't look at it from your perspective. Have you got this? Are you happy? It will revolutionize your sales. I promise you it'll revolutionize your sales. By the way, if you don't have value and there's no ROI, should you be selling the product? No, you do not have a business. You do not have a business. And if you can't make a decent product profit out of it, and you just make a tiny profit, you, can't, you have got a business, but you're going to be stuck in that infancy, survival, trying to get to stability for the rest of your life. Please don't do that. It's just too hard. Life's too hard there. Happy? Okay. Last one, famous five. I, I, I normally spend about two hours on this. Again, I'm, I'm running through these things really quickly. I'm trying to give you things that you can take away and you can implement. You, can't, you might not implement all of them. You'll implement some. In every sales thing, whether it's a cold call, whether it's a presentation, it's a first meeting, you're going to have several meetings, whether it's once off, you go in, you sell, and you finish, and you walk out, you've either got the sale, you haven't got the sale, you have to do these five things. First, build trust and credi credibility, relationship. If you don't get past this step, by the way, nothing works. People buy on emotion. Emotion is relationship. If somebody doesn't like you, your breath smells, you look bad, you look ugly, I don't tattoos. know, whatever it is, you've got tattoos, it's just the worst. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, Take, <laughs> delete that. Dave's got lots of tattoos. If you don't get through this, they're not going to buy from you. People buy from people. Do they buy online? Yes. So what have you got to do online? Seven touches, seven. You've got to touch somebody seven times online to create trust so that they will buy from you. They won't buy from you straight off. I, I didn't make the rules, just observe them. Trust and credibility. And again, there's techniques to all of this. I haven't got time to go through all this lot. If you guys want, we can do an entire session on how to do sales. Give me, put it on your feedback form if that's what you want. Secondly, what's in it for me? Ask, listen. There's a whole bunch of questions. Ask negative questions. What's the consequences if you don't get this? So you want this, think about financial planning, blah, blah, blah. Okay, if you get this, this policy, blah, 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 you get this. What, is the, what are the consequences if you don't get that? What will happen later on in life if you don't have that? Yeah, that's unacceptable. Okay, good. So is there value? Yes. All the way through this, what you're actually asking, all the way through this is how much is this worth to you? And ask the question. So Peter, okay, if you don't do this, how much are you going to lose? How much are you losing at the moment by not having this system? What's happening is that it could be a lifestyle question. I, I want to buy the breads with cameras. I want to buy a camera. Okay, good. So what's the value of that? Well, we want to create these memories and dreams, and I love this, and I want my artistic side. What if you don't do it? Yeah, well, you know, I've been through 20 years of my life, and I still haven't developed my artistic side, and I think it's time. <laughs> There's a value. Find out their value. It's not always monetary. They will tell you their value. They will tell you why they want to buy it. Sales is helping make somebody to make a decision to buy something, they already want. They are going to tell you what they want. Because I want to buy, I don't want to be sold. This is easy. Ask them what they want to buy. Then, give it to them. Okay, so I've just got to tell you about my product. <laughs> Let me just, I just want to put this on the table. <laughs> and he just wants his layer over here. If he wants his layer over here, what must I sell him? That layer. Do I have to tell him about the rest of this? You will talk yourself in the sale, you'll talk yourself all the way out. So present. Present what? Only what they've asked. Present the numbers. When you present the numbers, you present and you give them their value. Close. What do we close on? When does the close happen? Quick question. When does the close happen? In the first meeting. In the first meeting. The, sale, the close happens all the time. When can I get into your diary? Sales technique is, can I see you Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning? It's old, it's been done a thousand times. It just sounds like a sales thing. I just sit there, I've got, listen, I've got my diary open, which is suitable for you later on this week. Okay? 
Okay, good. Excellent. And that's my close, because I've now closed, and then I go, great. The next step is I will see you on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. I will send you a meeting request. I'm selling a product. I'm in there. I build trust and credibility. I ask him what he wants. I do his needs. I present the stuff I want. I give him the demo. I show him the numbers. And I say, excellent, would you like to buy? Yes. The next step is we sign the documentation. Okay, so I don't care whether it's just a little phone call or anywhere along the, the thing. Your close is whatever you need to do to create the next step. Okay? People need to know what the next step is. They are not, people want to buy, but you're going to take them through the process. Does this make sense to you? Yes, are you happy? Yeah. Who's confused? <laughs> yes. Confused. <laughs> you're not confused. Okay. Okay, so that's a long question. I'm not going to try and answer that now because we won't get through the things. Let's talk about that in your board. So that's a good thing because there are often things. Advisory boards. My biggest issue with the advisory boards is you guys don't know you need me. Or you don't know that you, don't know that you need me. You don't know you need this. We've spent, I work with Dave, we've spent actually weeks now, uh, tens of thousands of Zans trying to find out how people find us. <laughs> I, I don't have the answer. Other than... You guys tell other people. Yeah. Makes sense. Hey, listen, guys, this is really helping me. Why don't you come along too? Trust and credibility. Yep. It's very, very difficult. Okay, so there are times where you have to educate. There are times you have to go out there. What you've got to do is you've got to find what they're looking for, and you've got to paint yourself into their picture is the short answer. Does it make sense? Talk about that in your board. The shaft. So we're going to talk about the product. So is this nice? Who... Here's, here's, a, here's an arrow shaft. Are you all stunned? Are you gripped with this slide? Do you all understand the numbers, right? Yeah, you don't care. Your customer doesn't care either. They don't. They don't care. They don't want the drill bit. They want the hole in the wall. Is your product going to solve, make the hole in the wall? Yes. Okay? So it's not about your product. Okay. So that's the first thing. So products. So I'm going to approach this from a little bit of a different way. Remember we talked about Marketing, talk about sales, we're going to talk about product, we're going to talk about head office. Recurring revenue versus once off sales. So, one of the biggest problems I see when I read your profiles is most of you are stuck in the time for money trap. Okay? So, let's look at that. It's an exercise. Brett, you've seen this stuff before. But I, I, I do this, Chase, I did this with you guys. I do this as every single business I go into. I do it with my own businesses. I create what, what's called a marketing funnel or whatever you want to call it. There's YouTube videos on this if you want to go and have a look. Uh, lots of people teach on this, which is really good. So, so look, that's, this, look this stuff up. This is a physical exercise I do. This maybe is one of your POAs. Physical exercise. What I do is we get a big piece of paper like this, and we draw, we draw a funnel, which looks like this. And I want bands like that. And each band, I want to go a thousand, uh, one rand, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred, a million, greater than a million. Outrageous, something ridiculous, 50 million, put a number there. Okay? On this side. And I, I want you to have, draw a line down the middle, and on this side, I want you to do the same, but less ten. So one to a hundred to a thousand, blah, blah, blah. And you can change the numbers. You might be selling a product which is worth 30 million, in which case these numbers you need to change, but it doesn't matter. Okay? And what I want you to do is on this side, I want you to talk all about your once-off products and services. You sell once. I sell a cell phone once. But I sell airtime monthly. I sell the printer, the LaserJet printer, once. HP and all those guys, their printers cost nothing compared to what they used to cost years ago if you look at the value of money over time. They cost nothing. They almost give the printer away nowadays. Where's the money? In cartridges. <laughs> Once you bought that thing, man, you've got to come back, you've got to come back, you've got to come back, you've got to come back. I met a guy who ran, I forget, I think it was called Venture Computers, and they used to distribute ink cartridges and all that sort of stuff. He said, it's like printing money. We sit here and people just place orders on us. Okay, now he's got more and more competition and then more distributors and all that sort of stuff, so maybe they should have worked harder. I don't know, because I don't see them around. Maybe they got bought out by somebody. I don't know. So I want you to write this. So what I want you to do between, and just think about it right now. Let's, let's take McDonald's. I was going to say you do it for your own organization. We don't have time. 
but you must do this exercise, okay? Think about McDonald's. What do McDonald's sell between one and a thousand? Burgers. Burgers, pretty much everything, eh? <coughs> what do they sell between a thousand and ten thousand? Probably nothing. What, uh, what else do they sell? How about a party? Can you, can you book McDonald's for a party? Yeah. yeah and, and what we're going to do is going to put a party on and, we, you know, you get, and there's going to be 50 kids there. And so is there more than 1,000? Yeah. Yep, okay, that, that would work. What else could they do between 1,000 and 10,000? Ice creams. Ice creams? <laughs> what, what do they sell greater than a million? A franchise. A franchise. So who knew? They only sell burgers. No, they don't. They sell franchises. In fact, what's McDonald's main business, main line of business? Oh, property. property. So what do they do with the property? They buy the property, then the franchiser buys a franchise, and what does he do with, on the property? He rents it from McDonald's. So how much is the rental income? How much does it cost you to go to Burger University? It's a place called Burger University. Oh, right? You become a franchise owner, you have to go to Burger University. I think it's two or three weeks. You go to Burger University, it's in the States, and you study to how to run a McDonald's franchise. Why? Because it's all about systems. Right? Is it a once-off? Yes. So can you see, so where, where's your company? What are all the things you've got to do? And think about bundling things. Like as I said, a party. I don't know if McDonald's sell parties or not. But what do you do? Okay, we've got our product. Our product is only worth, I don't know, we sell it for, I don't know, 3,000 Rand. Yeah, we've got seven products. Okay, good. So if you put all seven products together, Deb, you've got a special on that. Yes. So does that fit between the 1,000 and 10 or between the 10 and 100? What if we bundle something together? What if we work with somebody else? What if we say, okay, we're going to give you a year's value of something? Does that make sense? Take your products and put them in here. Products and services. We can sell you an hour of our time. We can sell you 20 hours of our time. We could sell you an ongoing contract and we'll give you a 10% discount. Please don't give people, like we did with advisory boards, drop it from 5,000 down to 3,000. Don't, don't do things like that. Okay, it's, it's not worth your business. Okay? <laughs> uh, the sales thing, 45,000 Rand for doing what we're doing, by the way, and, and on a short time period. They gave a 15% discount. I said to the guy, 15 is quite generous. He said, yeah, we're trying to get people in quickly. <laughs> it's too much, okay? Over here, so this thing is fine, but it's time for money. I sell an hour, I make an hour. Once you've sold something, it's gone. Can you sell it again? No. no. If you sell an hour, what's happened to your hour? It's gone. gone. It's gone. You've got the money, they've got the time, it's gone. If you invest your time, is your time gone? No. no. Why? It's going to come back later. If I invest, if, I, if I've got seed, think about a farmer. I've got a bag of seed. If I eat the seed because I need bread, what's happened to my seed? It's gone. If I take the seed and I plant it, have I got anything? No. Next week, have I got anything? No. Next month? No. A few months later? Oh, the one seed gave me a whole bunch which gave me another 100 seeds, 30, 60, 100 fold. Yes? Now, I've just multiplied my seed. Biggest challenge you're sitting with running a small business or a medium-sized business is how do I invest my time? How do I work on my business, not in my business? Difference between surviving and thriving. The core essence of this. Take your company. Take your products. How do you create a recurring revenue from it? How do I sell this stuff online? How do I create a contract where that money comes in over and over? The software world has done it. They've sold from licenses to software as a service. We, we've been doing that for 22 years. We, we launched our business that way. Okay, does it make sense? How do you take something? If you're in the training business, you go, well, I just train people. They come on a course and it's gone. Okay, how about videoing the course and then selling the videos like we're doing? Except we're not selling these videos. You can't get these videos outside of the advisory board. If you're not a member, you can't have them. Okay? But other things I've done, I've done courses, videoed the course. Can you buy it? Sure you can. Because it sells 24 hours a day. It's online. Do I have to be anywhere when somebody buys it? No, not if I've got a system on the back end. They put their credit card in and there it goes. 
How can you do that? How can you do that? Okay, that's an exercise. How long will it take you? Half a day. Okay, and I want you to think totally out the box. I want you to put down everything which is absolutely crazy, stupid, nuts, and I want you to put it all in there. I want you to throw it in there, and some of it is going to be, we're never going to do that, and some of it is like, gee, that could be good. Because sometimes when you brainstorm, a stupid idea which you're not going to do can lead you to a good idea that you are going to do. Has anybody ever experienced that before? Yeah? Does this make sense? Yes? yes? Can I move on? Any questions? Happy. Products. Okay. Head office. So products. I want you to start taking your product and I want you to start thinking about your product and how do I... Because so I want to go back here. This area over here is primarily services and this over, uh, area over here is primarily product. If you don't have a product that you, and you're, all you're doing is services, you're stuck. I'm working with Dave at the moment. He's in a services business. He sells his time. And I got you to a point where you said the other day you're about 80% now that you've automated your time. Yeah. I shouldn't tell you that. Just delete that off the video. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he needs to free up his time. So we're going to talk about that now. So head office. So we're going to talk now about, remember the little tail feathers? Gives you direction. Yeah, I don't like head office. I want to be out there. I want to be driving my company. I want to be selling. I want to be creating products. I'm a product innovator. Me, I'm an innovator. A lot of you are I's and S's on the bossy. By the way, if you haven't done your bossy, some of you haven't done your bossy, please, 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 please do your bossy. We're going to be on your case in this next week or two. Do your bossy. It's for you. It's not for us. It helps us. You're already in a board, but it helps you. Understand where you are and take your whole management team through it. Understand where they are as well. Okay. Understand your team. So let's talk about head office. Release the Kraken. I'll just love that. So what is the Kraken? Your time. Time is? Money. Time is money. Now, time is money because you sell your time. Actually, time is massive amounts of money. Because if you invest your time, it's worth more. I remember talking to a guy who does trading for a living. He's very, very successful, one of the world's top traders. And he says, I drive a rubbish car. He says, I can't afford a good car. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't afford a good car, man? You made millions of dollars. And he goes, I can't afford it. Because if I buy a good car, he says, I could have taken that $100,000, million rand, and put that million rand in trading, it would have made me 10. If I put it in the car, it makes me nothing. In fact, the million becomes 500,000. I can't afford to buy a good car. So I just, buy, I, I just drive rubbish. Or I take Uber. It's cost effective. Same with his house, doesn't have a big house. So what a waste of money. I'd put it in money. Now, okay, somewhere along the line, I think there's a balance, <laughs> right? Those of you who are petrol heads totally agree with that. But it's definitely the point with your time. We need to work on more. What do you got to do? One, outsource. You can outsource anything nowadays. We are not 20 years ago. Let's just get out of this 1980s, 1990s mindset. Launched a company a couple of years ago working with a very bright technical guy and he's programming everything and I said stop it. <laughs> stop it. And, and he's programming, programming. I said outsource, find something. Said, okay. Elon, start. how do I do that? Elon's, freelance, B-lance, q -lance, I don't know what. Online. Go and find somebody else to program. Define the thing. Get somebody else to do it for cheaper than you can. Yeah, I don't know anybody. Find somebody. Get good at finding somebody. As, a, as an MD or as a, a direction of company, you've got to find other people who can do stuff because what's your time worth? More than you're charging at the moment. That's the answer. At the moment, your time is worth what you can sell it for. But your employee could do the same thing. Is your time worth more than your employee? Yes, that's why you have an employee. Your idea with an employee is to make a profit. Always say to people, an employee, you're not paid what you're worth. Because you're not. You're worth what we sold your services to the car client for. But we can't do that because we've got to pay your salary. We've got to make twice what, we cost you, what you cost us, which is your salary times 30%. We've got to make twice that. Right? And then that's what we're going to sell. How do you outsource? You have to give yourself time to focus, time to think. Every single day, minimum of one hour, every day. I remember going to a, 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 a big presentation in, in Europe once, it was in Paris, 
and there was uh, a, some, some of the top VC companies in Europe. And the guy who ran the biggest VC company in Europe, investing in tech, he says, we get the board of directors to meet every week for half a day. I'm like, good grief. When would we ever get anything done? <laughs> and he says, well, that's when we get things done. Yeah. And would this time to think be a time of like brainstorming or just more thinking of what you're currently doing or planning? Okay, so the question was, is this time to think more brainstorming or planning? It's everything. It's time to think. What do you need to think about? I don't know. It's going to be different things. Sometimes you're going to reflect. Sometimes you're going to plan. Sometimes you're going to develop something. Sometimes you're going to... But you're working. You're investing your time. You're planting seed. You're not eating the seed. You're not just selling the seed. Here, you can buy some seed. I've got a bag of seed. You need seed. You need to plant seed there. I can sell you some seed. Thanks. Take the profit. Our problem is with education. Education teaches us how to become employees and how to become small business owners where we sell our time. That's what education teaches you. And it teaches you to go take an MBA and another thing and another thing so you can sell your time for more so that you can create, create wealth. That doesn't create wealth. It's gone. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Ask anybody who's been in corporate who loses their job. I have a friend. He's a, he's a, he's a logistics consultant. He's done really, really well. 23 years he's been a logistics consultant. And he lost his job. In South Africa, he was working for one of the biggest, uh, big um, consulting companies. And he'd be, he worked all over the world. And they lost a huge client. The client went. And the whole team, I think they lost like 80 people, retrenched, gone. He's been out of a job for a year. And he said, he said to me the other day, he said, 23 years, we've been working hard, doing well, blah, 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 blah. He says, it's all gone. Actually, it took six months to all go. It's all Thank God his wife is working. Now he tries to consult and he gets odd jobs. It's all gone. 23 years of effort, all gone. Why? Time for money, time for money. I'm selling my seed. You've got to plant seed. You have to think about your business. You have to plan. You have to plan. You have to be at these sessions. I'm, I'm, I'm not punting this. <laughs> Sounds like I'm punting it. I'm not. This is probably your most valuable four hours of your month right now, unless you are doing some of this stuff. This is it. And what you're going to do with your board, and as you get to know them, leverage that. That's what I say. Don't waffle in your board. You, you, your, your chairman needs to be, if somebody's waffling, shh, bring them in. Or other board members, bring them in. Nicely, in love, with a smile on your face. Okay? Make the most of it. It's, it's like petrol in your car. Last point, I learned this from Pete Hill. Never manage up. Do not let your staff ever give you a job. Ever. When your staff come and you go, yeah, well, I'm not sure. I don't know, Gary. What do you, what, can you perhaps? No, I can't. Shh. They walk in. I don't know. What do you think I should do about this? We've got this problem with this client. Well, what do you think I should do? Oh, that's a good point. What, what would you do? Shh. Take it back again. Well, I think we used to have a rule. You come into my office, you come with the problem, and you come with the solution. Let's discuss the solution. Happy to discuss the solution anytime you like. Happy to take my experience and give it to you. Happy, happy, happy. When you run your own business, you're not an employee. As an employee, you protect your turf. We look after it because somebody else is trying to get my job. So it's okay. I'm just going to hold on to this. Sales reps do this all the time. I don't want to put anything in CRM because maybe if I leave, then they've got all the information. So if I, if I hold on to it, then I'm too valuable for them to fire me. Worst thing you can do. And as an owner of a business, you cannot do that. The most important thing for you to do is get into somebody else. Okay? So that you can grow, whether it's outsource or whatever. So never allow somebody to manage up. Never allow somebody to give you something back. No, it's gone. I learned that from PR. I remember there are a couple of instances where I, where I learned it once. Somebody actually came, well, I won't name names, but somebody actually came and they gave me a task. And I was like, yeah, okay. And Pete went, you, sorry, you can't do that. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I'll just watch this. <laughs> and I learned it. Wow. And since then, that's it. Now, all this stuff you got, this is not abdication, right? I'm not saying that. But don't allow stuff just to bounce up. People are brighter than you think. They can take more responsibility than you think. They can take more accountability than you think. And you know what? They actually want to. Is that scary? Who thinks it's scary? 
be honest. I, I think it's scary. You don't agree? No, I think it depends on your role. Yes? Do you want to explain that a little bit? So if you are, because I ran the IT shop, and if I did that, we'd never deliver. Ah. So that, that doesn't work in all circumstances. Okay. So for the sake of the video, it depends on your role and where you are. Vanessa comes out of big corporates, big, huge corporates, um, big process re-engineering and all that sort of stuff, and delivering IT products and saying that if I did that, I would not actually be able to deliver the product in the end. So yes, the, you know, if you've read the One Minute Manager, there's a lot of theory in here and there's a practicality. But the reality is if, if you do this too much, to take it on. There's a great guy called Bill Onken years ago he used to do a, a time management thing and he used to say, he talk, he used to talk about monkeys and he said, don't take somebody else's monkey. <laughs> okay? Quick tricks, task management. So this is another, this is a tip. Most people, they, we do it. I've got to do something. So they go, okay, maybe I can delegate it or outsource, right? Then they go, maybe what we could do is actually automate it so nobody has to do it, but we can put a system in place, or maybe actually we shouldn't be doing it at all. And we tend to go through this process, and most of the time, we go this way. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, and after a while, it's like, okay, listen, I wonder if maybe I can get somebody else to do this. And then we go on a bit further, and then after we've all done it for a while, I remember when I took over head office at our company, we automated a huge amount of stuff and lost two staff members. We just automated. We integrated. We got everything done. So it's just like we, we, just, we didn't need to do all this stuff anymore. And we also deleted. We, we, there's a whole bunch of filing that we used to do. We just went, why are we filing these things? No one knows. We just file them. We, we take it off the screen. We print it and we file it. And it was like, why are we doing that? Can, can we get it off the screen later? Yeah. Okay, good. What I want you to do is I want you to flip it the other way around. Every time something hits you, I want you to start at the bottom and go, can I delete this? Do we honestly need this? Why, why are we doing it? Why? 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 Everyone's busy, man. Why, why grab more work? If I can't delete it, can I automate it? Can I get it? Can we, can we spend a little bit more to set up a system so that we never have to do this and we can save 20 hours a month, every single month, forever and ever and ever. That's like planting a seed, isn't it? And sometimes it's not worth it. We, we don't automate our payroll into our, into our accounting package at the end of the month. They're, they're two separate packages because it's, there's three journal entries. It takes somebody about two minutes to do. But it would cost this much to do all the integration and every single year we'd have to check the integration because both packages change. It's not worth it. Okay, so if I can't automate it, can I delegate it or outsource it even better? Why, why do I like outsourcing, by the way? Why would you rather outsource as opposed to employ? Save Which time. costs you more? Save time Saves you time, money more than that? No, yeah. do employees come and go. Employees come and go, okay, build on that a bit more. Why is it cheaper to outsource and employ? You know the cost up front. I know the cost up front, yep, that's good. You have to train it's not really your problem. It's not really your problem? It's not your skill set. It's not your skill set? You risk losing the employee once you train them? Variable cost. Variable cost. That's actually the one I'm looking for. All these things are correct, so there's no wrong answers. When you employ somebody, I've got a cost of employing them, I've got to look after them, I've got to, nah, I can't get rid of them. You employ somebody, always tell people you employ, you employ for life. Can you get rid of somebody? Yes, there's a process to follow, follow that. We will have an HR person next year come talk to us at some point in time to help you. But you incur no variable costs. When we do our programming in the one company, Everything is offshore. Everything is offshore, and my one partner does a little bit. Do I, do I pay for their premises? No. Their coffee, their toilet paper? No. Do, do I care whether they're sick or not? No. Do, do I care whether they go on training or not? No. What am I interested in? The finished product. I test the finished product. If it's not perfect, what do I do? Send it back. When it's perfect, it's fixed, and everything is done, what do I do? Pay them. Pay is his hourly rate more than my employee? Yes. Is the overall cost over a year more or less? Less. less? less. If there's something where I'm employing him 160 hours every single month and I can see that for the next 20 years, maybe I'll employ somebody. Maybe. People cost money. Your biggest issue in your company is people. All your problems in life, by the way, this is another for free, all your problems in life come out of a bad relationship. All of them. It could be a client, it could be a staff member, it could be a family member. <laughs> a 
right? Whatever it is. All your problems in life, go and look at, understand every single problem you've got in life, it comes out of a relationship. Maybe it's a service delivery issue with, a, with, with, with somebody. Maybe it's a supply, it's a service issue, it's a relationship. The relationship's wrong. Sometimes you can't fix them. Then you have to just manage them. The more staff you have, the more headaches. That's why I'm a big fan of lifestyle businesses. Can you scale? Yes, you can. Business is all about leverage and scale. I'm teaching you some of that stuff here. Happy. Yeah. Maybe that's a POA. What have you also got to do? You've got to weave your intuition and knowledge into the fabric of your company. You're the person who started the company. You need to do this. I love, there's a great little trick. It values, job descriptions, all this sort of stuff. Lovely little trick in the e-myth. And he says, what you do is this, this, this you in the company, you go map out your company. I need a financial director, an ops director, a sales director, and a whatever, blah, blah, blah. And we need a customer services person. We need a, a receptionist. And I need a... And map out your organogram. And then put your name absolutely everywhere. We need somebody to clean the cups and make the coffee. Tony. <laughs> right? Then you've got to say, great, what is the job description for each and every single one of those things? Who, who knows this best? You do. Why? Because you've done them all. When, when I started Dovetail One Company, I did absolutely everything 22 years ago. I used to build computers, I run, used to run network cable, did absolutely everything. Write the software, do the sales, do the accounts, absolutely everything. Okay? And then in time I went, you know what, it makes sense if I got a bookkeeper because I'm really bad with the accounts. So what does the bookkeeper need to do? Well, I know because I used to do the books. Then we need a technician. What does a technician need to do? Well, I know. So this is something I didn't do. I learned now and now I change it. So write the job description. When you say this is what it is, and by the way, job description is not 15 pages of Latin and Greek. One page. Quick, easy, one minute, I can read it. What are your key tasks, responsibilities, what you need to do? Yes? Once you have that, is it easier to employ somebody? Much Why? Because you've got guidelines. So I've got a guideline. I've got a blueprint. This is what I'm looking for. Can you do this? This is my expectation. Can you do this? Yes? Are you happy about this? Are you passionate about it? Are you skilled? Remember the three circles? Are you passionate? Are you skilled? Can we make money out of this? Yes. Do we agree on the price? Yes. Okay, good. Job. This is what I expect. I'm going to measure you against this. Okay? If you do that, you can go from infancy to go-go up to prime. You will shoot through adolescence really quickly. If you don't, by the time you get to adolescence, your company is quite big, you've got a heck of a lot of things to change. And all the stuff that Steph talked about last week, last month, unwritten ground rules, all those culture issues, I've now got to change it. As he said, remember, you walk into the company and on day one, I already know what I need to do. The boss says I need to do this, but it's okay because we will actually do this. Please wash your cups up after thing, but actually no one really does, so that's okay. We well, need to change that. Okay, later on it is so hard to change it. Okay? Just a quick one. Adidas talks about how do I get to prime really quickly. He, he talks about culture. From day one, culture. And by culture, it's all these things. It's all this stuff. It's not just, okay, what's the culture in the company? We, come, we wear jeans on a Friday. Yeah, that's part of it. But it's actually all of these things. Yes, does it make sense? Are you happy? Yeah. Okay. Inspect what you expect. What gets measured improves. Or what gets managed improves. This is absolutely critical. What you look at improves. You've got to monitor your staff. You've got to measure it. If you don't know it, you won't survive. In that, and I'm not going to go through this, there are five key things you need to do in your company. So I'm going to move past this. Strategy, structure, processes, rewards, recognition, people practices. Everything fits under those five. Have a look at the slide later. You can go back and have a look at this. Another key principle, what you reward gets done. What you reward gets done. Praise people, put in monetary rewards, put in trips to Sun City, I don't know, it doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes it's not monetary. Recognition goes a massive one away. And I want you to reward right actions, not just the results. So the results is I want you to make a number. How do we make a number? Well, you need to do this, this, and this. Okay, good. That's how you're going to get to the result. So reward the action, and you will get the result, not just the result. Otherwise, people sometimes take a shortcut to get the result, and it's a shortcut. Temporary. Make sense? Know your numbers. So it's interesting. They, they interviewed the top, I think, 50 billionaires in the world, most richest people in the world, and they said, why, how did you get rich? 
and they all had a whole bunch of different things. The only thing every single one of them said they did is the only thing was they all said, I know my business backwards, I know my numbers backwards. What have you got to know? Your key economic driver, remember we talked about that, the good to great? You've got to have a forecast. If you don't have a forecast, get it done. Maybe that's a plan of action for you. What am I going to sell this month, next month, the next month? Three months, absolute crystal clarity. This is where we're going to be in the next three months. This is what I've got to do. How do I change that if the numbers aren't right? The next three months after that, which takes you to six, I've got some good idea of where I am. I've got this, and by the way, the more recurring revenue you have, the better it's going to be. And then 12 months, I've got a bit of a guesswork, but we should be doing this. This is what's happened before. And lastly, cash is king. Cash is king. You've got to manage your cash. As an entrepreneur, please, if you've got a bookkeeper who's giving you an income statement, a balance sheet at the end of the month, and you don't know what they're on about, and you don't understand it, fire them. Don't fire them. Relook at the way it works. Come to Pete's talk next year. Relook at it. You've got, to, as an entrepreneur, you've got to look at your business from a cash perspective. The auditor is going to give you his financial perspective at the end of the year. I call it financial gymnastics. He moves the numbers up and down and all the rest of it. And I actually have no idea. I just look at the profit line. I go, how much tax? Okay, and I've got to know it's clear and is SARS happy and all the rest of it. Yes, we have our own set of financial management accounts, which I, I know intimately every single month. And I know exactly what caused those numbers. And if the numbers aren't right, what do we need to do to fix it? You have to know this. Or you can stay in survival mode. It's called working on your business, not in your business. The evolution of an entrepreneur. And this is exactly it. You start a business. Remember that survival. Volume, volume, volume. Sell more, sell more. Do more, do more. Okay, we're doing this. We're not making enough money. Okay, let's just do this as well. And we make a bit of money. Wait, oh, that's a good idea. Wait, let's just, we'll do this over here. We just make a bit more money over here. But hang on a second. I've just got to spin this plate over here. And that's going, oh, one over. Oh, no, one dropped. Oh, okay, another one over here. And you're busy, busy, busy. And you're working 18 hours a day. And how much money are you making? None. Why? Too busy. You're selling your time. You're not focusing. Volume, 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 volume. Then it's all about revenue. If we just top line, if we just push this, we're going to make more money, make more money. Look at my money, look at my, look at my turnover, look at my turnover going up, look at my turnover going up. Then you grow up a little bit and you start looking at my bottom line. Vanity, sanity. Then after a while you realize, actually what I need to manage is my cash. So do all these other things matter? Yes. But if I get my cash right and I've got cash in the bank, Imagine now, I don't know, take, take your expenses, take your monthly expenses, think about your company, take your monthly expenses, multiply it by three. Imagine always having that amount of cash in your bank at any point in time. So you need to multiply that by 10. Would it help you make different decisions? Yes. Because you're not holding up cash flow walls, you're not running all over the place trying to make things happen. Okay, you can make decisions. You can take that... It's okay, I don't need the money. You can pay me over three months. It's okay, I'm going to charge you an extra 10%. Or I'll give you a, I'll give you a cash discount, 3%, 5%. Get your cash in quickly. You can make different decisions. I can structure a deal for you. Now you don't have to pay me up front. You can pay me as you use the product. Makes sense. Changes. You can start investing. You can work on your business, not in your business. So... What have we learned? Okay, we have to, I wanted you to make some notes. We have to, we have to get out of here. Um, but um, I'm just going to go past this quickly. Um, and let's put this up. There's your boards again. Um, so break into your boards. If, I, I can, if the chair, chair guys can just meet me outside, each of you needs to be appointed a chairman. Please appoint a chairman today for the next month. Okay? I hope you got some value out of what we've done today. I hope it's given you some valuable tips. And I hope there's some stuff that you can take into your board and, and, and really discuss, really get under the skin. Please talk about your problems in the board. Please talk about the things which, where you're, your glass, glass ceilings. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, thank you.